we'll see how it goes. So I really want to compress that stuff. Alright. Now let's just go back and quickly tie in a uh, trailing shuck like we did earlier. But you could tie, oh, I don't know if you heard that, but it was a hundred hooks. And I'm not in a good place right now. So we're going to cut off a piece of new line. Doesn't matter how long it is. The longer the better. The doctor will love you for it. And we're going to divide that into a, oh, a quarter. They really like it when you do that. So that stuff. Right now, that's about a quarter. Because really what we're trying to do is simulate. Either it could be an emerger or it could be a stent. That's what's so nice about this pattern. Compare done in general or a haystack, right? So there's the trailing shuck, and now we want to cut that at a 45 degree angle. Very, very wispy, uh, real light. You can twist those together. It's easier to cut. Go ahead and cut them. Now, where was that? Here's some dubbing. Everybody know how to dub? So all I've done is sort of preformed my body, and I've got a good taper starting from the back forward. Dubbing, that's that dubbing wide I grabbed, it's enough for about 25. People that have problems with dubbing, their number one problem, they're using too much dubbing. If you're, if you're in a big hurry and you've been tying a long time, that's one thing. But if you're a beginner, you should take the very smallest amount, you can't even see that. And all that you're really doing is changing the color of the thread. It's got no choice. It's just going to go on there. It's such a small amount. You can see how small the amount is. I'm grabbing another small amount. And you think it's the same thing. It's much easier to add dubbing to dubbing. Once you get that foundation, then... Once you get the foundation, it's very easy to use here, and if you have any uh, weak spots in there, you can just add more dubbing. It goes on. And another thing, I don't care what direction you wind the dubbing, twist it on, but only in one direction. Don't go back and forth. I put mine on clockwise. There's a debate on what clockwise comes clockwise. I'll leave that up. I'll leave that on. Mine's clockwise. Change the work over here. Alright. So, if you don't have a tapered body, then you can tape. It's hard to see. You just monitor. Underbody being tapered. Bring your thread up, up close. Okay. And then that first turn is coming up right now. I'm holding that tail. I don't want that tail to torque around.
I got too much dubbing. I'm gonna pull some dubbing up. Alright. So right behind that that mess of a wing that's facing over. And what a lot of guys do is they'll pull this back and they build a big dam in front. And about three weeks later, a month later, or when springtime comes and you're going to fish it, and it's been sitting in your box, it's all back forward again. Because that deer here just has, you're tying it down, it has a tendency to want to stay down. So one thing that you might be able to do is you grab it and, and maybe clumps, maybe five different clumps. You pull back on it, pinch it together, and then do a wrap. Pull back on it. Do a wrap. Pull back on it. Do a wrap. Don't let that stuff torque to the far side. Pull back on it. Do a wrap. That ten helps that stand upright. Now what you want to do is turn it. I look at it forward because you want that to be upright, dead in the front. And then, because I left my dubbing on there, I might be able to sneak it in there. Now all I want to do is sort of fill in the gap. I'm going to pull back on that, and I'm going to build the dam with the dubbing. And if you need to go behind one more time, everything comes loose, it's like, and just let's finish. Or if you don't have a whip finisher, use a half hitch tool. If you do it three times, it's just like a whip finish. Pull down on it slightly. There's your compare done.